Good morning guys and welcome back to another day. Today we are going to be actually working on, as I spin around here, sorry, Kittrick's car. His parts are coming in. Uh, we just had his big ETS order come in uh, yesterday. So our next big order from Rally Sport comes in today and we'll be able to get started on it and actually make some progress. I'm trying to get out of the sun so I don't get blinded. Uh, this morning we had to go drop off some heads for the stage three building in the background so those can get rebuilt at cylinder head service and we had to make a run to Lowe's, get some uh, Odeker clamps. I like to use those. It's the same factory style clamps that they use on the breather system. So it's just nice to put those back on. It makes it look factory. And I like doing that for all the builds instead of just hose clamp and stuff. So we're gonna get the garage open and we're gonna get Hyper Blue started and pulled out so we can work on Kittrick's car today. And you guys won't believe what happened yesterday. So. Right at the end of the video, when I said I was starting up Piper Blue to move it into the garage, I went ahead and let it warm up. And obviously the car's pretty grumpy when it's cold. I mean, it's E85 and it's it was probably like 20 to 30 degrees out when I started it. So with that car how it is and cams and E85, it likes a little open when it's cold. And apparently the neighbors didn't like it. So that was at like five o'clock in the afternoon. And they literally called the cops on us for starting Hyper Blue and letting it run for maybe five to 10 minutes before I pulled it in the garage because you can't really move it when it's cold and nor do I really want to try to drive it when it's cold. So, yep, they called the cops on us and a cop came by, said we had a noise complaint for revving an engine. I mean, really guys, it's five in the afternoon. This guy over here, he just doesn't like us. Mr. Bob the Builder noise complainer. So he just doesn't like us. It was five o'clock in the afternoon. What are you going to do? The cop was super nice. He was like, yeah, I was expecting to pull up and see some young college kids being idiots and revving their motors, not just starting a car to move it in the garage. So it's pretty ridiculous. Like, I can't believe the shit that we have to deal with in this neighborhood. I mean, we're pretty respectful. Yeah, the car is loud, but I mean, then again, it's five in the afternoon. It's not like we're starting at midnight. So that's definitely pretty frustrating. I guess that is what it is. There we go, now I'm out of the sun. But it's pretty annoying. Um, you can't even start your car without having them complain. I don't know. But we're gonna be starting it and it's like 10 o'clock right now, 11 o'clock. I think it's 10 o'clock. So what are they gonna do? Oh, well. Let's get to it, guys. All right, guys, you're not going to believe what happened this morning. I was out here, and I was getting ready. I was warming the cars up. I was warming up the Beamer because we were going to take it and take those heads in. And it sounded like a fucking shit show of popcorn here. A popcorn. I can't even say the damn word. It was a shit show. I heard something falling, and I thought someone was throwing something at me. And it ends up being a bird shitting all over the ground. I've never seen this in my life. So you gotta see what it did. Look at Kittrick's car. Look at this. Holy shit. There's some more on the ground. All around there. So now we're gonna go wash Kittrick's car before we tear it apart. So that way that bird crap doesn't just sit on the paint. So I'm gonna go do that now. And we got our parts in guys. We got our rally sport order in. I'll be showing you guys that here in a moment. Our torque solutions order is in. And we got the radiator for Series Gray. Hell yeah. Oh, it's so bad. Why, birds? Well, we got Hyper Blue moved out of the garage and obviously we had to let it warm up for a minute before you can move it. Otherwise, it just doesn't like life. It's 
pretty bad. I mean, obviously we're dealing E85, cold. It's about 30 degrees to 40 degrees maybe right now. So obviously you need to let it warm up for a minute. Those of you that run E85 know what I'm talking about. No matter what, even if it's not a race car, this car being more of a race car than most, it has big cams. E85, big injectors, big fuel system. It, it needs to warm up for a minute. Well, got the cops called on us again for noise complaint. Mind you, it's noon. It's the middle of the day. Like, this is getting ridiculous. And we got Mr. Neighbor over there that complains about noise. He's been out there all day in his garage, standing away, which we don't have any problems with. I mean, go out and go work in your garage, but when they complain about us working here and noise being hyper blue, it doesn't make any sense. It's not like I just let the car run or rev it up or do launch control or do some stupid shit. So that's kind of my rant for today. It's pretty frustrating. I hardly ever start the car and the last two days I have started the car just to move it around having the cops come by which mind you the cops are super nice super cool dudes some are the other guy was a car guy i don't know about this one but they completely understand and they're kind of shaking their head so i think it's going to get to the point where they just don't show up or they know it's a bullshit call i don't know the, like i said before the cop that came last night he said he was expecting to pull up to some young college kids being idiots and rubbing the car up not just starting the car and letting it warm up to pull in the garage so that's my rant guys it's pretty frustrating you can't even enjoy where you live because you have a race car i don't know it's frustrating so soon the car will be tore apart as soon as we pull that fuel system out of series gray so it's not even going to run for a little bit anyways but it's just frustrating to deal with so let's get into today's video that's what's going on here is kittrick's parts so here's Kittrick's parts that came in and I have another box over here. So I'm going to be showing you guys these. My shadow's going to be in here, but you can see his car obviously in the garage. So we're ready to get this up in the air and start getting this thing pulled apart. So we can start getting this thing pulled apart. This is going to be what I claim as a stage three plus package through me. So what we have here, I'm going to go over it and go down the line. We have Cobb ID1050X injectors. The only thing about Cobb on those is they give you a nice plug and play adapter. So that's really nice on those. Then we have an AEM E85 340 liter per an hour fuel pump. So that'll be good to go for this. We also reached out to our guys at Torque Solution again. They got us these air pump deletes super fast. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate you. And we got our Grim Street external wastegate. That's a 38 mil. We got our VF series internal wastegate block off right there. You guys can see these part numbers. And then we have our Grim Speed Boost Controller. That's all we use around here for the most part. This car even has a Grim Speed Boost Controller on it, actually. So, fun fact for you guys. And then moving over here, we have our IAG Billet TGV Deletes down there. We have their top feed fuel rails, a speed density kit. We have a fuel pressure gauge hiding back there from IAG. Over here, we have an aeromotive fuel pressure regulator. We have one step colder NGK plugs as well. This is gonna be our tile 38 mil wastegate for that external wastegate up pipe. And we have our IAG AOS. Like I said, guys, all I run, this is the best out there. And of course, we got that competition series. Cause that, like I told you guys, all I run, best part. If you guys are looking for an AOS, don't look any further. IAG is the best out there. We use it on Hyper Blue, and we use it on anything like this car is going to be a stock turbo car. So, moving on, we have from ETS, they got this out super fast for us. I appreciate Robert over there and Michael, and they always take care of us. Craig is a great one over there too. He's been added onto their team here in about the last year. So if you guys ever need anything, hit those guys up. They take care of us nonstop. We have a, sorry about that, it's gonna get bright. It has a three and a half inch core, black wrinkle intercooler piping. We did do a tile 50 blow-off valve on here as well. So a very good stage three plus kit for this car. It obviously already has a parent intake. So he had a cob, but I had him put this parent on so we could clear that ETS intercooler piping easier and better. So 
Today we're gonna be getting this thing up in the air. We're gonna get it pulled apart. We gotta pull it pretty far apart, guys, like I said to you before. We gotta pull the intake manifold, intercooler, turbo, up pipe, and down pipe. So pretty much we're at the point where we're stripping it down to a bare long block and almost pulling the motor. See, I'm gonna get my shadow out of there for you. So you can see what we're starting with. This is a really nice car. It only has 50,000 miles on it. We just did that pre-tune check that you guys saw. It passed with flying colors, so we're ready to go to get this thing modified. But we are gonna be doing speed density on this car. You don't really need to, so say, with the little baby small turbo back there. But we're trying to prepare for bigger plans in the future. We do plan on putting a bigger turbo on this car here soon and upgrade the clutch as well, because that's gonna be the other weak point. So that's what we're gonna be doing, guys. I'm gonna get this thing up in the air, probably put you guys on a time lapse so you can watch me get the thing pulled apart, and then I'll walk you through kind of step by step of what we're doing and how these parts go on. Oh yeah, guys, we can't forget about our awesome Torx Solution turbo inlet, since we're not gonna be using that on great car, obviously now, and we're gonna get this on his car so we can do that review on this that I promised you guys. So you guys just saw, I had to end up doing some trimming on these little supports here because these are for the bumper. If you look underneath, I can get it to focus. There we go. That's where the bumper actually connects as two of them, one on each side. And you can tell they run underneath the inner core. And then when you come in the back here, oh man, I don't know if I'm gonna get it there. So you can see straight down here, I had the trim right there. Try to get the focus, there you go. I had the trim right there. So that way I could keep those supports. Cause I wanna, I kinda wanna keep those for the bumper anyways. So we just had to modify those a little bit and then we got the scene the bolt right up. And man, does it look good. He is gonna be so happy. So, as you can see, we changed. Not trying to ruin our new sweatshirt and it's really nice outside. So shorts, t-shirt weather, it's probably like 45, 50 degrees. So I know all my East Coast friends are probably laughing at me right now, but it's definitely warm for us in this climate. I think I'm gonna go ahead and instead of doing a time lapse of pulling the thing apart up top, I'm just gonna jump through it because you guys have already seen me pull apart several cars now. And you've seen me do one very similar to 08 plus. So I'm just gonna get this thing apart. So that way I can share with you guys putting on all those new parts and any kind of tips and tricks I got for you. So I'm gonna get this scene apart. I'll catch up with you guys as soon as I got this scene tore down.
Now we got this intake manifold off the car. I'm gonna show you guys what we need to do to tear this down. Cause I was gonna do this on series gray and obviously we kind of skipped through that. So I will be showing you this and we're gonna get our table out. So that way we can be working on this and not the ground. That's also our fuel. So this is what the car looks like all torn apart. We got our nice little baby turbo that unfortunately will be staying on this car for now, but he will be upgrading in the future. So this is what it looks like guys. And the next up, what we're gonna do, we gotta get the downpipe off there. We're gonna get this air pump system out as well. But first we gotta do downpipe, then we're gonna do turbo up pipe, then we'll do air pump system. Then we can put the new up pipe in after we put the air pump deletes on obviously. So air pump deletes, up pipe, and then turbo. And we're back together to this point. But the reason why we got pulled out apart is because we are doing those new IAG over there, fuel lines, rails, and we're doing the air motive regulator. So we need to get this tore down to do the, that and the TGV delete. So, oh yeah, don't forget the turbo inlet. I keep forgetting that. So we got to do that too. So let's get our table out and we'll get started on this in just a moment. having to put our sweatshirt on because well it's getting a little later in the day sun went away gets cold pretty quick and but we've made some good progress despite the issues we've had today and ups and downs we did make some progress we got kittrick's car all tore apart now so now we are ready to start putting on new parts it's pretty exciting well i guess we have air pump to pull off but i'll pull that off right now just to show you guys this is what we've done I did put the cardboard back on the intercooler there because I'm leaning over it and I don't want to bend any of his fins. So good idea to put that back on the car if you are working on it still. But here we are, whole motors tore apart. We got the intake manifold off. We also got downpipe, turbo, up pipe off the car. The only thing left is a stupid air pump system. We got to unbolt from the back of this head, unbolt from the back of that head, and then we'll pull that assembly out. We will be just leaving the barometric pressure sensor here. I'm not gonna cut this out. I'm just gonna leave that bolted like we did on series gray. So, ooh, you guys got a little sneak peek there. So, we'll be leaving that and we're gonna be getting onto that intake manifold now. We just need to get our table out like I had mentioned, but is it really? There is, a, oh God, not, I'm never gonna get this, but is it really mosquito time already? Come on. I've seen a couple today, fun. So like I said, we're gonna get that table out. We're gonna start tearing the intake manifold part. I'm gonna show you guys what's going on with that and how to do that. So I'm gonna grab the table and get started. There we go, we got our good old table out. So first thing first, we're gonna be getting these stupid plates off. I always hate, we're gonna get those off. Then we're gonna get this wire harness removed and off of here after we do that. We will be taking this upper manifold off these TGVs because we're not going to be using anything in there. So that way we'll just have a bare manifold. We'll already have our harness off. We're not even using this turbo limit. So this thing is going to be completely bare here in a moment. So let's get to it. We are left with now guys we got the old tgv system and fuel rails and turbo inlet off of this intake as you just saw now we can go ahead and get the new parts on this which we got to grab them out of the boxes here we have the iag tgv deletes iag fuel rails 
the Torx Solution Turbo Inlet, and we're going to be building some IAG fuel lines as well. So let's get those on the table. I'll get those out and show you guys what we're doing. got this laid out for you guys so i can show you what's going on here's the iag fuel rails we decided to go with red and we decided to go with silver on their tgvs their tgvs are obviously really nice condition really nice product you can see tgv delete so we'll get these on the manifold we'll get what's also over here is a set of id 1050x injectors they're in a cob box because they give you this nice oops, they give you a plug and play adapters. So that's the ones I tend to go with. That way we can just literally plug them in the factory. It's really nice. So we have those. We gotta put these together on the TGVs. And we also have our turbo one that we're gonna have to get in there too. So like I said, this is the Torx Solution one. You guys seen in my previous video where I started going over about this thing. It's definitely really nice, really durable. Can't really squish it at all. So this will be a nice upgrade for this car. So, I'm going to get this stuff on there, and I'll let you guys watch as I do it. We got our TGVs all mounted up as you guys saw and our fuel injectors in with the fuel rails. I just have this sitting here because obviously we can't really mount it anyway. So it's just sitting there right now. Uh, we will need to get a plug for this guy since we will not be using the factory blow valve on this car. We are going speed density and using the tile 50 millimeter blow valve. So we won't be using the recirc, but obviously we'll be using the other ports that we have here around. And if we don't, I believe we have some plugs in there for it. But we got these on, as you guys can see, came out really good. The only complaint I have ever with doing these, as you guys probably saw me over here, they don't ever give you gaskets for the top part. They give you gaskets for the lower. So fortunately enough, I had some here from Series Gray to be able to put on here and use. So I'll just have to order another set for Series Gray. But we got this all together. Obviously, we need to put our wire harness back on here and get it ready to put on the car. Uh, I think that today the fuel line kit came, so I gotta go grab that so we can get our fittings in here and make our fuel lines like I've showed you guys before. So we will need to go down to the mailbox, pick that up, so that way we can get that. Making really good progress still. You can see we got sunset behind us here, so it is getting a little bit later out, but we still got progress to go. Um, I would like to get the external wastegate in the car up pipe and wastegate onto the up pipe so still want to do that and as for a stopping point tonight maybe i'll make the fuel lines and at least get that ready so the car is pretty much all ready to go back together tomorrow so i think that might be where we go or i might do fuel lines tomorrow just depends but for now i'm going to get the external wastegate set up out here show you guys what we're working with and what we need to do to get that set up so just a moment, I'll move this intake map hold and get it on here.
Now that I got that all laid out for you guys, we have our Grim Speed external wastegate up pipe. This is a 38 slash 40 mil. We're gonna be using a 38 since we're using tile. This is what it looks like, guys. This is, I like their product. Had really good luck with Grim Speeds. Probably don't, it is the only one I use for the stock location external wastegates. Then we have our tile wastegate here. This is the 38 mil. This is all I use is tile. Great product. We have all our springs here. We're gonna set our spring pressure in this gate because they don't come with any springs in them. So we need to take this top part apart and figure out our spring colors and pressure. There's a diagram online. So we'll be doing that right now. That way I can get the springs in here. Then we'll get it onto that up pipe. So give me just a moment. I'll knock this out and then we'll get that on the up pipe. Well, it was getting dark outside. So we were moving back into the garage and man, I think you guys can see better anyways right now. We got the grim speed up pipe with the tile wastegate on it. And we have our clamp there, as you can see, just loosely on. That's the way I like to do it. That way we can put this up pipe in the car, bolt it up, then we'll put the dump tube on, move the wastegate where we need to to get that dump tube in the right placement. Cause that dump tube, oops, you guys are gonna see, it goes right over that axle right there. So it's best to leave this loose so we can put that dump tube and get it at the perfect angle. So. I'll go ahead get this in the car and then I'll show you guys once I got it all bolted up there and dumped you on to really show you what I'm talking about. Just a moment. We got that up pipe all in the car and we got the wastegate and dump tube on. It's not a fun process guys. So I know you'll probably get frustrated. Just take your time. It does all work. It does all line up, but it does take time. So let's check it out. Here we are in the engine bay. You can see we got that external wastegate on. I like to use this upper bracket right here to help hold this. I do not put that bracket on over there. Someone will probably hate me for it, but fuck that bracket. We ain't putting that on. And you can see here on the dump tube, I'm gonna try to do the best I can here. We got clearance by the axle and we got clearance from the transmission. And obviously we can, here, we can move this over and side to side where we need to for when we put the turbo back on, but, I'm trying to get the best I can here. You can see we clear the axle. You do not want to put that dump tube too low on your axle because then it will take off that clamp right there, right there. And then it'll spray axle grease everywhere. And ain't nobody like spraying axle grease all the engine bay because it's a pain in the ass to clean off. So just don't do it guys. We're ready, we can get the turbo on. Everything's done there. I probably will put the boost controller line onto the wastegate right now, just because it's easier, obviously, without the turbo one. But we are ready to get the turbo back on. And after that, I mean, it's just a matter of obviously put the downpipe on and we can start working on the intake manifold again. So definitely moving along here. And I'm gonna get that vacuum line on that wastegate. I'll show you guys right now what I'm talking about. So you can see we have our lines right there and there for our boost controller. We're just gonna be using that side one. I like to put it off like you can see they're up and over and then I can run my line up and around these lines and over so that way it doesn't ever come near heat, burn a hole, and then take out this poor little stock motor. No, we'd have a boost cut, but you get what I mean. We don't want to burn that hose. So now before we put the turbo on, we do need to get that uh, Grim Speed block off plate for the wastegate. So we need to come over here. See, we brought all the parts inside because it was Getting dark out, oops, it's right over here. So this is what we need. And then we're gonna take this and put this on the turbo. I'll show you guys here in just a moment. Here's our standard STI turbo. This is your internal wastegate here. You're gonna have a clip holding this on. I might get it right underneath there if I can get it to focus. So you have that clip and then you're gonna have this bolt and the other bolt, man, we are out of focus, that bolt. So we have these two bolts there we need to take off and we need to take that clip off and then we can put this bracket up on the here. What that's gonna do is if you see in the back of the turbo here, we have our wastegate and oh boy, look at that wastegate crack. Yep, but this turbo is not gonna be on there long. So no big deal. That's really common for them to have that wastegate crack you see there. But here's our internal wastegate. The whole reason why we need that bracket is because we're no longer controlling boost with this wastegate and this arm right here, which 
then it releases that and opens that. So we need this bracket here to hold this shut. So it holds that to the turbo. Let's see if I can open this one-handed. I doubt it. Maybe. Oh, look at that. Starting to get skills for you. So here's what I'm talking about, guys. It's in the package. Let me get it out here. I was just talking my skills up here. Now I'm struggle busting it. Fuck me. Okay. Ugh, and I'm terrible at this. There we go. This is our bracket. We have three holes, so not only do you have to take off those two bolts, we're gonna have to take off the third one right down there. And then this will sit like so. So guys, let's get this old factory internal wastegate off and then we can put this bracket on. Jumping forward, and it looks like I died all around here apparently. But we got our Grim Speed block off on there as you can see it now and how it looks like. These are a really tight fit, guys. So usually I'll put this bolt in first and then start these one by one. And then you'll have to tighten these and kind of evenly do it because it is really tight. You can even see how much it's pulling on there to try to keep this shut. So if you ever think that this isn't gonna fit or not gonna work, it does. I've used plenty of them but they are kind of a pain to get on there. So now we can get this turbo back on the car. Boom, we got the turbo back on the car. Waste gates down there, obviously. So now that we got this all hooked up, turbo's back on, we can start getting that IAG AOS set up because we are gonna be needing to use that port right there. So we'll need to be hooking up to that and that'll be a lot easier, obviously, with the intake manifold off. We are going to move some stuff over here. So that'll be the next thing that we're going to jump on. Don't know if I'm going to get onto it tonight. Hmm.